What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my quarterly wrap up for the first quarter of the year. I've been comparing my reading stats from last year and now, and the first quarter of the year last year was way different than it is now, so I'm excited to talk about it. Basically, I'm just going to talk about my reading stats and the books that I've liked and some of the books that I didn't like. Let's get started. So, so far I've read 35 books this year and I surpassed my Goodreads goal to read 30 books. And compared to last year, I had only read six books up to this point. Yet last year I read the most amount of books. Most of my reading got done during the summer. And so the fact that I'm super on track right now is spooky but pretty cool at the same time so i'm excited to see what my final total will be in december as far as genres go i have read three nonfiction, 18 contemporary one classic and 12 graphic novels you can see which genres i like the most and which i like the least of the classic and the nonfiction i have read for school and i do count those books because i have read a few which i will talk more about in this video so for now those are all the genres that i have read this year as far as ratings go i have given one dnf one two stars four three stars four three and a half stars, eight four stars, two four and a half stars, and 14 five stars. So I haven't been that picky with five stars, but I've read some pretty good five stars, so I can't complain. As for format, I have read 18 physical, 12 ebooks, and five audio. Next for my library read versus unread, I have checked out nine books and read five of the nine. So that's pretty good. Usually I have a problem where I get too many library books and then I just never read them. Um, such a struggle, but it happens. So starting out the year in January, I just read a bunch of graphic novels or comics and one that was my favorite of the month was Sweet Tooth. I loved this. It was just so interesting. This is about a post-apocalyptic world set during a pandemic. I did not know that was going to happen while I was reading that in January. So I wouldn't advise to read it right now, but it is about a boy named Gus who is a hybrid. He is half human, half animal, and basically a pandemic is sweeping out all of humanity, but the but these hybrids are staying alive. It was really just fun to read and it just gave me Fall Out Boy vibes. It felt like I was reading a book that was set during the music video Sugar We're Going Down. If you know, you know, but I really enjoyed this book. It was fun. Did I know that I was going to live in a pandemic three months later? No. At least we don't have animal hybrids walking around, but fun news about this book if you've read it. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. We are getting an adaptation of it. I was listening to the Books on Bound podcast hosted by Raileen and Ariel and I was excited when Raileen talked about it. I really enjoyed this. Um, I know Booktube was talking about it like in 2014. I just got on the bandwagon because I was reading so much Kindle Unlimited and yeah, I just enjoyed this. It was really fun. I don't advise to read it now, but if you do want to read books about a pandemic, I highly recommend it. It was fun. Um, it's a little scary, but I really enjoyed it. So in February, I actually ended up having a lot of favorite books. Um, I didn't have any books in January that I absolutely hated, but in February, I had a pretty solid reading month. I know my stats show that I've had 14 five stars so far, but honestly, I didn't get that far until like March or April. Um, so February was also just mediocre, but I did have some fun books that I'm going to keep recommending. First being a graphic novel, and this is Sheets. I loved this. And I'm sad that I don't have a copy of it. I got it from the library and it was just so good. It is a middle grade book about ghosts. It was about this girl who can see ghosts and it is all about like a laundromat. Um, the girl's mother has passed away and she is just holding down her laundromat while she's dealing with her dad being depressed. And oh, it was just so good. 
and I just recommend it. I recommend it to everyone. Um, the hype is real if you've seen it being hyped a lot because I have and that's what made me pick it up and it was just phenomenal. I just really enjoyed it and I can't wait for the sequel. Next, I read one book for Blackathon and this was hosted by Jesse from Bowties and Books. And I also have a reading challenge that I set for myself, which was to read 20 new to me authors in 2020. And guys, I have been sleeping on Jason Reynolds and I have already read three of his books and I stan. He is <laughs> He's just great and I'm sad that I just got around to it. But I read his co-written book which is All American Boys and this is about police brutality and it features a white protagonist and a black protagonist and the point of view was awesome. I just really enjoyed seeing the perspective from a black character and that is the person that has been convicted of a crime that he didn't do. And then we see the perspective from a white protagonist and he actually knew the cop who was involved in this situation and it was just so good. I was just gripping to read it. It was so good. It was a gripping book and it was just so fun to read. So if you haven't gotten a chance to read it yet and you like The Hate You Give, I highly recommend this. It came out in 2014 or 2015 and I'm just really appreciative to have this book. And the last book that I read in February that I really enjoyed was An Arc and this is A Galaxy of Sea Stars by Jean Froelich Cirillo. This is a middle grade about an 11 year old girl named Izzy and she is starting sex sixth grade and her mother hasn't come home and there's just so much going on that she's not told and that's one thing that irked me. Um, a pattern that I've been seeing in the books that I've been reading YA or middle grade is that the parents just have really bad communication skills and I just hate it so much. I'm just looking for a good middle grade where the parents just actually talk to their children. Please give it to me because I just need it. Um, I understand it is a realistic situation, but there's just a lot of things that happen that the child should be informed of. So Izzy gets a rude awakening. Her dad was deployed to Afghanistan and he ends up bringing back his interpreter and his family who are Muslim and they're from Afghanistan. There are trigger warnings for Islamophobia, but it is actually challenged and a trigger warning for PTSD. And I just enjoyed this. It was good. I did have problems surrounding the parents and the miscommunication, but I enjoyed getting to learn something. I learned a lot about mapping um, because the main character, Izzy, she is constantly mapping the ocean and that was just really fun. And I got to learn about a lot of things that I didn't know. And I enjoyed Satara. She was so fierce and she just really was into her culture and I feel like I got to learn a lot about the Muslim culture through her. I'm really enjoying the diverse stories that middle grades are getting so I did really enjoy this one. And then I had my first DNF of the year in February and this was an arc. It is every reason we shouldn't and I could tell you every reason I shouldn't have read that book. <laughs> it was just cringy. Um, it is really confusing. I ended up DNFing this book at 25%. So I got a little bit in, I just could not finish. The main character Olivia is 15. She was an ice skater along with her parents and they run an ice rink. Her parents are Olympians and her mom has arthritis and she just has a problem where because of ice skating, she will never be able to skate again. And she, like, I understand that she was supposed to be like an angsty 15 year old, but she was really, I, she really resented her parents, but it just should have been executed better. Um, for instance, they go to the PT appointment and her mom is sobbing because of the pain. And basically the doctors told her that she's never going to heal. And her response and her response is, oh, I wish my mom wasn't like this because then she would care more about me is what the gist of it was. And that is what just did me in. And I was like, okay, closing this book, goodbye, we're done with this. Um, also the slang for teenagers is just not right and it's cringy. Oh, okay, um, I'm reading from my review and there's also a scene about Olivia's bruises that she would get from falling on the ice. And there was a line that says, 
It was so bad that CPS would come to her house. Okay, um, all right. <laughs> Weird flex, but okay. Um, my favorite of the 25% that I ended up reading was the teenage slang was just so cringe. Um, when the boy didn't come to school, they would say, oh, he probably has Ebola. And they said it like so much. And I know at the time when Ebola was a thing, that would be a joke, but just reading it just doesn't sound right. Um, this guy didn't come to school for like a week and everybody was just like, oh, well, he probably has Ebola. He probably died, whatever, it's fine. Even though he was supposed to be like the love interest or something. Um, there was a part where the other character, she is older and she would do roller derby, which I thought was so cool. And if I would have continued the book, I would have probably continued it for that. But she kept writing guy liner when the boy would put on eyeliner. Sorry, but it's called eyeliner, not guy liner. We're not in the 2000s anymore. It is just eyeliner. It doesn't mean anything that the guy is putting on eyeliner if you call it guy liner. It's just eyeliner. This dude is putting on eyeliner. It's cool. It's fine. Um, and last to just wrap up my mini review is that um, the whole reason that she couldn't ice skate was because she was just embarrassed because like a video went viral of her tournament that she screwed up. And that was just, that just kind of felt cheap to me. Um, I would have liked it to be like, oh, she got hurt so she can never do it again or something like that. But it was just basically like, oh no, I don't want to do this ever again. And it would just be like a build up where it was like, oh, with this big secret that I have that this is why I'm not. And it was just because she was just embarrassed. My And my last complaint is that she was friends with a 20 year old girl who was also a teen mom and nothing against that at all. I just think that that is so unrealistic that a 20 year old who has a child would hang out with a 15 year old who is basically a child. That just didn't make any sense to me. She was like inviting her to the roller derby places and they were like going out and it just felt weird to me. And I didn't know that she was like a teen mom until like the 25% in and I was like, wait, why is a 15 year old and a 20 year old hanging out? This is weird. Um, and that's it. I, I didn't like it as much. If you did, I'm, I'm glad I just didn't. I just couldn't do it. I wish I would have enjoyed it because I liked the concept of ice skating. It sounded cool. It was about the, the Olympics, but it just wasn't it. Next in March, I did another TBR games and I had Beer Pong pick my TBR and I actually completed the whole TBR. Round of applause for me because I did Bookopoly in January and did not read a single thing. But March was also my free month basically because I had spring break. And then a week after spring break, we were in lockdown and told to report home. And here I am. Um, but I had a pretty solid month and I read some pretty good books. So let's talk about them. This, this was my physical TBR. Um, I did read some eBooks that were arcs, including Unscripted by Nicole Kronzer, which I really enjoyed. It was about a girl going to improv camp and sexual harassment that she faces. And I just thought it was well done. It was pretty good. I enjoyed it. I also read Only Mostly Devastated by Sophie Gonzalez. I loved it so much. It is a Greece retelling, but it is just, a hard-hitting contemporary about a boy named Ollie who moves temporarily from California to the East Coast. I'm pretty sure it's North Carolina because his aunt is sick with cancer and it was just such a hard-hitting book but it was just so good. I just really enjoyed it. Um, he has been talking to this boy named Will and he finds out that they go to the same school and he is closeted and there's a lot of things like that going on. Um, so if you are triggered by a relationship where the boy or just the love interest in general is in the closet and he doesn't want to be outed, there is that. But he also plays basketball and I don't know. I just really enjoyed it. I have not stopped thinking about this book since I've read it and I just really, really enjoyed it. So if you're looking for a new queer book, I highly recommend that one. But do keep in mind that it is not own voices 
and so definitely pick up some own voices but also pick up this one. And I read another arc that I really enjoyed and this was When You Were Everything by Ashley Woodfolk. She is one of my autobi authors. She's just one of my favorite authors that writes grief and this time she wrote a book about a best friend breakup and it was just so good. Um, if you enjoy that, I recommend it. I feel like there's not enough books about best friend breakups. It also has stutter representation. It has a person of color main character and it is own voices. I absolutely enjoyed it. It is set in New York and I just loved every minute of it. I was just so engaged with the book and I was getting so pissed off but it was so relatable. This is about a black girl named Layla who loses her best friend Cleo and it is just due to a friendship breakup and it is all about her grieving that process. I feel like that's not talked about enough and we don't get a lot of books about that and it is such a real thing. If you've ever had a long-term platonic friendship that has ended, I think that you'll be able to relate to this. There were so many times that I was like, oh, that has happened to me once or twice. This is told in flashbacks and we're learning why Layla and Cleo are no longer friends. And it just is all about Layla trying to do over the memories. She goes to certain places in New York and she tries to redo the memories, but that doesn't work out for her. I just love Ashley Woodfolk. I'm so glad that I was able to read this book early for review and I just really recommend it. I haven't gotten to recommend it yet so hear it from me. Please read it and please read The Beauty That Remains because I don't ever shut up about that book. This was so good. I really enjoyed it. Now to the physical books. Um, I'm just gonna go with the ones I enjoyed and the ones that I did not. Um, I feel like I've talked about these ones a lot so the ones that I've talked about a lot I won't talk about further but um, I read Rick and I have a reading vlog on this. I read it for the Queer Lit Readathon which was at the end of March. It was the weekend version and I read this and I read Hurricane Child by Kaysen Callender. I gave that a three star. I didn't enjoy it as much but I talk about it more in my vlog as well as this but the gist of this is that it is a book about a boy named Rick who is starting sixth grade and he is asexual and he's just trying to learn what that means and he also bonds with his grandfather and I just really really enjoyed this. I love George and this one was a hit. It was an arc filled month in March. I ended up reading Dragon Hoops by Jean Luen Yang and What Stars Are Made Of by Sarah Allen. This was incredible. I had low expectations and I didn't think I was going to like it but I gave this thick boy five stars. It was so good. It just read like a documentary even though in the book he says that's not what it is. It really is and it was so good. Um, I don't care much for basketball but this was crazy good and I was shocked. Um, <laughs> basically it is about Jean working at a high school and he doesn't know why their basketball team is so special but this focuses on the team and one of the coaches. It challenges race and it just talks all about how one gets to know basketball and I really enjoyed it. Um, it's really big. <laughs> it's super heavy. The main reason I think I liked it was because I do like graphic memoirs and this was just written really well and it captured the essence of why this team is so special and why basketball is beloved in his school. It was a fun read. It's pretty long so it took me a couple days to read it. It's really heavy so I'm gonna put it down but Overall, I enjoyed it. If you have been wanting to pick it up, I recommend it. Then I read This Middle Grade, which is What Stars Are Made Of by Sarah Allen. It is own voices for Turner Syndrome. This is about a girl named Libby who is 12 and it's all about science. It was just a really cute middle grade. It was and it was educational. I learned a lot about stars and about Cecilia Payne, who is a astronomer. She is a female astronomer. And like I said, with a galaxy of sea stars, I just love the educational portion of middle grade that is coming out now. I really enjoyed this um, but I will say there's a massive trigger warning for a lot of talk about miscarriages. That was one thing that I thought was a little too much especially in a middle grade book um, but in general it was good. I learned a lot about Turner Syndrome. Like I said its own voices. I recommend it if you're looking for a middle grade. 
Sorry, this is becoming a recommendations video, but what channel did you think you clicked on? All right, then the rest of my TBR for Beer Pong Picks My TBR was Time Between Us by Tamara Ireland Stone, which I gave a four out of five star. This was a time travel book and it was so fun. I was worried that after reading Again But Better, I would be scarred from ever reading a time travel book again. Um, I was honestly anxious because I was like, oh no, it's gonna be a time travel. No, I was so scared for them the time travel but I loved the concept of time traveling in this. Um yeah I gave it a four out of five stars. Tamara Ireland Stone can never ever disappoint me. I was actually surprised. I was surprised because I'm pretty sure this is her debut novel but it did not disappoint and I would like to pick up the sequel in the future. And then I read What If It's Us and I gave it a two star. Guys it just it just wasn't good. And my one thing I'm gonna say is did they even like each other? Because I felt like throughout this long book, what is it like 400 something pages? This is 434 pages of them fighting. This was not a meet cute. This was a couple fighting for 400 pages. <laughs> They kept fighting and fighting and fighting and I was like, do you even like each other? Because I'm pretty sure you don't. Um, I was disappointed, but not surprised. <laughs> I heard a lot of negativity surrounding this. I also listened to the audiobook, which I enjoyed, but the whole book was them fighting and it was weird. And basically, Adam Silvera's character, Ben, is him. He was writing a fantasy novel and it was basically Infinity Sun. And one of my biggest pet peeves is self inserts. And I just felt like Adam and Becky could have done better. If you enjoyed it, I'm so happy for you. I just felt like they were fighting the whole time. <laughs> and I did not want to listen to them fight for 400 pages at all. And then I listened to two audiobooks by Jason Reynolds, my new favorite author. I ended up listening to Long Way Down and For Everyone, and I gave both a five star. He is great. He cannot do any bad. Um, For Everyone was just a letter, and it was so motivational, and it was just inspirational, and it was just good. <laughs> I was looking for a book similar to All American Boys and Long Way Down definitely did it for me. This is told in the span of an elevator ride. He's taking an elevator ride down to the first floor of his apartment to go and kill his brother's killer and he meets all of his past relatives and just people from his past that talk to him about it and he's just making the decision and this was just so so good. I'm just gonna fanboy about him because I love him so much. Um, Long Way Down was a piece of art. Um, chef's kiss to that. It was great and it was definitely what I needed after reading All American Boys. April was my most read month because there were so many readathons and we have been stuck inside. Um, but I did have a lot of schoolwork to do. I participated in the Slapshot Readathon Weekend Edition, which me and Becca hosted for a weekend in April because we are suffering in Miss Hockey so much that we decided to read books for that. I also participated in the Stay at Home Reading Rush, which I have a vlog for. I also participated in the Dewey's 24 Hour Readathon, which I thought was canceled but I guess it's not anymore if anyone knows let me know um but I had a lot of reading going on so here's what I read haha <laughs> I did a reading vlog for Little Universes by Heather Demetrios which I gave a five out of five stars it was incredible and I highly recommend my reading vlog because it was just raw and it was fun and I cried so much over this book. This is about two sisters, May and Hannah, who lose their parents to a tsunami in Malaysia. Hannah is dealing with depression and opioid addiction and May is a scientist and she is trying to get into the NASA program. This is set during their senior year, but after their parents' death, they are forced to move 
out of their home in California to Boston to live with their aunt and uncle. And this book was just so good. This is my top book of the year. Nothing has passed it, nothing can. It has grief, it has a great representation of addiction. It is just done so well. We also have male characters who are feminine and they are not afraid to wear makeup or eyeliner. Um, they're not afraid to wear makeup, they're not afraid to wear nail polish. There's also a lot of talk about meditation and tarot cards and this was so good and watch my reading vlog to know more about it but it was just so so good it has so much talk about space and it has grief it has addiction um there's a huge trigger warning for addiction because there are a lot of graphic scenes if you can't watch that if you can't watch that <laughs> if you can't read about so it's the next day. I wasn't able to finish out this video because my house got super noisy. Um, but here are the books that I read in May that I enjoyed and didn't enjoy. Um, I only got to a fourth of my TBR, but I did end up finishing some of the books that were on my TBR after the readathon. I ended up reading volume one and two of Check, Please. This was a reread. This was a new read because it came out in April and it was fantastic. I gave it a five star. This book was perfect to read during this time because I miss hockey so much that this just gave me everything that I wanted. As Biddy and his teammates would score and just skate, I would be so happy and I would be screaming from my bed and it was a good time. I really enjoyed it if you're looking for a graphic novel series and it's also a webcomic. And on audio I listened to Us Against You by Frederick Bachman which is the sequel to Bear Town, and I gave this a five star and cried and it was just everything. It broke me and it was the worst book to read at this time because I was just sad. This book is a tearjerker for sure. I don't recommend to read it right now because I made that mistake and I was like, oh my god, this is just too much <laughs> right now, but I absolutely loved it. I just love Frederick Bachman. Beartown wrapped up pretty well, so I wasn't even sure what direction this was going to go in, but it was phenomenal and I just love Frederick Bachman. He writes hockey really well and I miss hockey so much. So this was perfect. Let's just say I went through a lot of emotions reading this book. I love the audiobooks. They're my favorite. In general, I really enjoyed this. I gave it a five star, but Frederick Bachman, why would you do that to me? It was the worst time, but it was the best time. Next for school, I had to read Watchmen by Alan Moore. This is a graphic novel and I'm just gonna come clean and say that I just don't like DC. I just can't get into it. I just am a Marvel fan through and through, but I understand, like I appreciate what this was doing. It was a fun read, but the fact that I had to read it for school, I think is what just brought me out of the story. I just hate having to like interpret what I read and analyze it and all. So maybe I'll come back to this again, but I did give it a three star, honestly, just because I felt dumb because I didn't know what was happening. And the fact that I was reading it for school, usually when I read a graphic novel, I read it in one sitting or two. This I couldn't do because it was a school book. So I was reading other books at the time. And yeah, I feel like it was just not a good experience because I was reading it for school, but I liked it. It was okay. I'm just not a fan of DC. Next was the stay at home reading rush and I have a vlog for that as well, but I ended up reading two books and then finished the third like a couple of days after. I ended up reading Not Exactly a Love Story by Audrey Columbus and I gave this a three star. Really just watch my vlog because I go into more depth and it's my reaction and so the full reason that I didn't enjoy this was because it is supposed to be set in 1977 and the only reason I knew it was set in 1977 was because the first line of the book says on my 15th birthday January 16th 1977 I slogged through a New York City rainstorm of her hurricane proportions to buy the Sunday paper. This is about a boy named Vinny and he just straight up has bad luck. His parents are getting divorced, his dog died, and his crush moved away to Alaska. 
Um, his parents get a divorce and the mom moves in with his gym teacher and they basically start a life together and it's all about how Vinny's feeling about his mom getting remarried very quickly. She gets remarried like two or three months after the divorce, but primarily the plot is about Vinny being an anonymous caller. He calls his neighbor, who is a girl he goes to school with. He finds her number at school and he ends up calling her every night at midnight and it just becomes that but he really is more interested in that and doesn't really build himself up. He doesn't really get friends. It's just really him committed to this and building a fish tank. He's also Italian and I had problems with that because I don't feel like this guy is Italian whatsoever. But overall, I gave it a three star. It was all right. It wasn't the best. But a book I did give five stars was Ivy Aberdeen's Letter to the World by Ashley Herring Blake. This is a middle grade story about a girl named Ivy who lives in Georgia and a tornado destroys her house and rips it to shreds and there is nothing left. She's also struggling with her sexuality and the whole book is her just coming to terms with her sexuality and a lot more. Ashley Herring Blake is one of my favorite authors and she did not disappoint with this middle grade. I absolutely loved it. The last book that I had on my TBR for the reading rush was when You Get the Chance by Tom Ryan and Robin Stevenson, which was an arc from NetGalley. This is now coming out in May of 2021, but I do not recommend this one, guys, because it was just not good. Um, the first half of it was good, but then the rest was just trash. Um, I skimmed like the last 50 pages or something. This is a young adult story set in Canada, specifically Nova Scotia, and it is about these two cousins, Mark and Talia, who go to Nova Scotia with their family because their grandfather has passed away, and they're trying to help their grandmother with the lake house that he left, and they're trying to fix it up to sell it. There's another problem where Talia's dad and Mark's mother do not get along anymore. And throughout the whole story, you're trying to find out why. The whole reason that they haven't talked in years is so dumb. Like, it's not something that you would think. Um, basically, it is just, like, petty. It's not anything that you would be like, oh! <gasps> It's like, just not, it's so dumb. One of the themes in the book is talking about identity and sexuality and how important it is for someone to have their identity if they choose. Um, and there is a part in the second part of the book where a character is misgendered and this is Talia's partner, Erin. And throughout the whole book, we're talking about how important pronouns are. And there is a scene uh, where they are misgendered and that made me crazy and I was like what? I had to read it back a couple times and I was like wait is this right? So I'm hoping this is just an editing error and it's not on the authors but I'm going to take that with a grain of salt. I just don't recommend this. It's about kids, it's about teens going to Toronto Pride but honestly there are like four chapters at Pride and that's it. Um, so I don't recommend this queer book. Just go into it with some of my feedback if you are looking forward to reading it, but there are better queer stories that don't misgender their characters. For my philosophy course for the end of the year, we read Watchmen and Persepolis. I gave this a five star. I just love graphic memoirs and this was awesome. Um, I just really enjoyed it. Um, it is about the author growing up in Iran during her childhood and during the Iranian revolution. And it was hard hitting at times, but there was so much comic relief and I really enjoyed it. And to end the month, I ended up reading three books for Dewey's 24-hour readathon. First, I picked up the shortest book on my shelves, and this was Very Good Lives by J.K. Rowling, and I gave this a three star because I have a bias against J.K. Rowling, but also there are some times that I'm just like, what? How did this woman write this? And how did she actually say these words out loud? This is JK Rowling's commencement speech at Harvard. And I could not even believe that she actually said these words out loud and was actually allowed to say this. My favorite line of this commencement speech is, it might inadvertently influence you to abandon promised careers in business, the law or politics for the giddy delights of becoming a gay wizard. 
Yes, J.K. Rowling, I just went through four years of Harvard, but you're gonna tell me that I should just become a gay wizard. And that was supposed to be a joke. That was supposed to be a joke, but guess who's not laughing? Me. <laughs> that line just kind of threw me. I don't know if I'm overthinking it or not, but well, I don't know if I'm just reading that and taking it out of context um, and just thinking about how she does not advocate for the queer community whatsoever, but this was trash. <laughs> um, some of it was okay, but I just couldn't get past some of the shit that she said. I was like, what? Um, so honestly, I apologize to all of the Harvard grads that had to hear that speech. <laughs> Middle grade has just been great to me this year and I ended up picking up the audiobook of Other Words for Home by Jasmine Warga and I gave this a five star. It was fucking great. This was phenomenal. I saw Kayla from Books and Lala recommend this last year, and so I had it on my overdrive and, and I decided to pick it up for the readathon, and I am so glad that I did. It was so great. This is about a young girl named Jude, and she is fleeing Syria with her mother, leaving her father and her brother behind. And it's all about her in ESL classes and her trying to make do with the situation and try and adapt to America. And there are so many times that I just felt for her, but in general, I just loved it. She loves movies and theater, and I just loved seeing her progression. And there are trigger warnings for Islamophobia, and I just absolutely loved this. I see so many people talking about this. I posted a picture on Instagram, and everyone has been saying this is their favorite book. I just loved it so much. I'm definitely getting a physical copy of it. And last, for April, I ended up reading The Avant-Garde Volume 2. This is one of my favorite series, and it did not disappoint. This book is about a queer basketball team called The Avant-Garde guards and this is so fantastic that I just wish I had the whole bind up and I just need all of it. It is just so good and addicting and I loved it so much. I liked this one better than the first volume just because the first volume is really building up to the second one. The first one is all about recruiting and this volume is all about actually playing and the whole team and I loved it. It was great. I love the characters. My favorite character is Nicole. She's just so cool and I just love the like shy characters and I feel like she just has a lot to say and her character is my favorite. I love this series and I'm glad that I read it because it was definitely one that I needed. This is one of my favorite graphic novels so if you are looking for more and you're looking for one for the Queer Lit Readathon, I recommend this series. It's so good. It is queer. It has sports, but it's not like a big sports book. Like, I don't care about basketball, so I'm not in it for the basketball. I'm more in it for the characters and the art. So that was my quarterly wrap up for the first quarter of the year. Let me know what your favorite book of the year has been so far. Thank you all for watching. I hope you're having a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.